Hello, welcome to Tapper Machine. I'm Josh Tapper. So, what we got here, just as the title says, the cheapest power feed I could find on eBay. It was $140, $139.40, something like that. And I don't know where it's made, China, Taiwan, who knows, but we're going to find out if it's any good. We're going to put it on our second Series 1 J-Head bridge port here. Uh, this is the, my second machine. My other one's got the servo power feed and the digital readout on it. And later on this year, we'll probably add a digital readout to this machine also. I saved this from the scrapper. This was in the local high school, and they were getting rid of it. It's a very tight machine, very good yet. Um, had a little issues here and there from the kids, but things that were all fixable. So let's get this bad boy unboxed and find out what we have. So there it is. That's everything. And uh, the instructions are, you know, in some language and ours, English. So we should be able to figure this out pretty easy. And I'm sure I have the servo power feed instructions somewhere that should correlate. And this is a Vivor brand. Um, I've bought a few things. I got a curtain door that's a Vivor brand. Um, and that seems to be really well, you know, works good. So. Let's start uh, tearing the bridge port apart and get this thing on here and see how it works. So this is where the instructions get really bad. Um, we have this sleeve that goes in here, and this one that goes over the top of that, which is what rides on the, the bearing here, the internal bearing. Um, but when you put it all together the way it says, it doesn't line up. Well, there's these little spacers, and it says nowhere in the instructions does it tell you what to do with these little spacers. Well, they actually go on the shaft behind in order to shim it out to the proper height or depth. So, that took a little bit of figure in there, but I got those spacers in there. Let's see where the machine actually lands. And it looks like I could use some more spacers, which I believe I have. I believe it came with them. But you also got to have it set right that this works. So if I put this back on, that's too far out. So it doesn't engage now. So now I got to readjust all that, take them spacers back out and put in just what I need, figure out how many that is. Just bad translation. So let's keep working on this and try to get this all right, but I'm going to wind up taking a bunch of spacers out and, and we'll get it. We'll get there.
All right, so I got it figured out. This spacer that goes on the shaft here and up against the lead screw is too long so that when you slide their bearing race over it, that's supposed to you know, be fairly free, um, it sticks out too far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off and use this as the spacer behind this one for the lead screw. And that'll bring it out to the proper height and then uh, I can use little shims to get the rest of the way. So I'm going to go cut that off. I'll be right back and we'll get this thing together. So we got the power feed all mounted up. Everything's good here. It cranks. When you engage it, it's connected to the drive. So that's all good. Now we got the stop brackets and all that to put on. And I'll get that the bag off of it. And that gets bolted here where these two are. And then there's these little slide stops that go on there. So let's get this all mounted up. All right, so we got it all installed. No thanks to these horrible instructions. These things are just trash. Um, there's this corny little cap here and that actually goes over the limit switch and just kind of floats there and protects it and these stops you just set those where you want them when you're cutting now for the most part I pretty much run it to the max travel and set those um, as my stops at the max travel so I don't power into um, the very end of the lead screw and get stuck or have break something um, I don't think you can break something with these but so let's uh, tighten those down and let's give this thing a test run. Okay, so down here is the power switch. Turn it on. The light is up here. And it feeds. The rheostat works. You can get it down quite a ways. Not as good as my servo, but... And then this is also the rapid switch. Well, it looks like this is going to work pretty well. Um, like I said, this is my backup mill. And I'll probably, I seen there was a bend in the lead screw. I'll probably wind up replacing the lead screw. This originally had the Bridgeport power feed on it. And I had shortened this back in the day when I got it. Back when I didn't have money to spend on tooling and upgrades and things like that. Um, so I just put it together the best I could at the time and try not to spend money. Now I'll probably spend a little more money on it and fix those few things that are still bad with it, but it's going to work for the job at hand. Now, many of you have seen my videos and know that I've got lighting issues and there's all kinds of issues. A lot of that is the cameras. I've been having numerous problems with my cameras and I'm on the search for a new camera. So as of right now, I have had a whole bunch of cool jobs in here and I've shot videos and edited them and uploaded for the next two months. Every Friday in the next two months, this is the last video I am going to shoot with these crappy cameras. I am looking for a new camera that's going to pick up the light in here better because there's plenty of light in here. Um, but the camera's having a problem with that and I have to fix it in editing and I'm getting just bad picture sometimes too. So I'm working on that. That's coming. 
So stay tuned, it's gonna get better, I promise. And with that, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.